Hello, I'm Dave. In this video, I'm going to taste and describe Superfuel. I'm especially eager to try Superfuel because it is as old as Soylent, and like Plenty Shake, it was created by an enthusiastic amateur who turned his passion into a successful business. In 2014, when Soylent was getting started, many amateurs, inspired by Rob Reinhardt's vision, were developing their own recipes and sharing them on a website that was then hosted at Soylent.com. Today, that site has spun off to an independent URL, we'll put it here, but all the early recipes are still there. If you go to that URL and click the Recipes tab and search on the word Schmoyland, you'll find the original recipe for this product. It was so popular that its designer, Alex Snyder, or Axe Cho, started a company to sell it commercially. Today that company is called Super Body Fuel, and the product is called Super Fuel. Of course, the formula has been updated several times over the years, and this latest version uses a new rice protein, and the latest version of the Super Body Fuel micronutrient mix, and both of these changes are supposed to improve the flavor over previous versions. We'll see about that soon. But first, let's talk about macronutrients, the three major components of all nutrition, carbohydrates, protein, and fats. In Superfuel, the carbs are primarily from oat flour. It's worth noting that this product has somewhat less carbs than others do. When mixed to directions, Superfuel is only about 25% carbohydrate and 20% protein and 55% fat. By contrast, Soylent 1.8 is 35% carbs and Huel has 37%. Now, 25% carbs is not a drastically low-carb diet. It's not a paleo diet or a keto diet, which would be under 10% carbs. But it is low-ish, and that's worth noting, if, especially if you're thinking about weight loss. Superfuel is also different in its fat component. As delivered, it doesn't provide any at all. Back in the day, every bag of Soylent 1.0 also came with a little plastic bottle of oil to mix into the powder along with the water, and that was how the original Soylent provided the fat component of nutrition. Today, almost every meal replacement comes as a single powder blend with the fat right in the powder. But the oil is still there. It's simply been powderized. If you want to know how this magic is done, do a search on the phrase powdered olive oil and you'll find recipes online for making your own oil powder. It's kind of stupidly obvious. You take some kind of digestible food powder, amateurs often use tapioca powder, and you drizzle oil into it and you stir like mad and the oil is adsorbed onto the powder granules and you end up with a dry powder that is 50% or more fat by weight. That's how Soylent and Jimmy Joy and Quill and, all, and so on all get fats into the product by mixing oil with an edible powder as a carrier. That's convenient, but there's a downside. The carrier powder becomes part of the product. For commercial use, the carrier is usually maltodextrin, a powder made from corn. It's a carbohydrate, and it has a high glycemic index, so it isn't the best food for diabetics. Superfuel gets around this whole issue in a brutally simple way. There's no, no fat in it, whatever. We, the users, have to add the fat by adding some type of oil as we mix the product. The downside of that is a little more trouble in mixing. The upside is that we can control the total calorie intake within limits by using more or less oil. A full day's nutrition in terms of carbs and protein and all the micronutrients of superfuel can have anything from 1,200 calories up to 2,500 calories depending on the amount of oil we stir into it. 
And of course the next question is, which oil? Super Body Fuel recommends using olive oil. I'm leery of that idea because I know that good olive oil has a pronounced flavor, which is delicious on salads, but probably not the flavor I want in my breakfast drink. So I'm opting to use canola oil. I could talk for another long time about dietary oils, but let's just say that in my opinion a name brand canola, like this Crisco product, is almost as healthy as olive oil and cheaper, and has a neutral flavor that should work well in this use. Now another option that's spelled out on the product label is to supply your fats in the form of heavy cream. I'm looking forward to trying that too, but I have to point out that Superfuel, when mixed with oil, is vegan. When mixed with cream, because cream is a product of the unethical enslavement of sentient beings, namely the cows, uh, Superfuel is no longer vegan. Well, I'm not vegan, so that's not a problem for me. However, I expect the cream is going to give a different flavor and a different texture than mixing with oil. So to properly judge Superfuel, I need to sample it, sample it mixed both ways, with oil and with cream. And since we have three flavors, chocolate, cinnamon, and vanilla, that's six different mixes and that's a lot of tasting. So I guess we better get started. Upon palpation, it appears there is a scoop in the mix. Let me tell you how meal replacement companies could save money and don't put a scoop down in the powder. There it is. For my 2,000 calorie ration, I want 281 grams of this fine brown powder. 258, 71, 280 grams. I'm not going to go for the odd gram. Now for the oil, Super Body Fuel says I want to add for my 2,000 calories 120 milliliters. Well, unfortunately, a milliliter is a measure of volume. And I'm using a kitchen scale to measure by weight. Fortunately, I know that oil, a milliliter of oil, weighs 0.9 of a gram. So multiplying 0.9 times 120, I get 180, one, sorry, 108 grams. And here we go, from 279 as it was then. So close. There we are. Distress it. <laughs> Thirty-three seconds. So that's a fairly viscous mix. Okay. Off to the fridge with you. So there's no sign of settling in the super fuel. So at a minute 20 in the Zon Cup, Super Fuel Vanilla Oil Mix is the thickest I've measured. Uh, Huel would have been thicker if it had run through the cup, but it wouldn't. At any rate, let's see how it goes down. sweet. Uh, there is a flavor of some type of grain 
not exactly oats. The sweetener again is monk fruit, which I found. I looked it up in Wikipedia and recommend you do the same. It's quite an interesting product and, uh, well, read about it. Monk fruit. Uh, there are quite a few monks in here. So uh, I would call this fairly sweet. Um, it's quite, it's pleasant. Uh, the vanilla flavor, which is, uh, I noticed again on the package, organic vanilla bean, not vanilla extract, has gone into this. Um, the vanilla flavor is quite light. So the primary taste is of uh, perhaps the rice protein, perhaps the oats, and the monk fruit. And uh, we'll see how it goes down for breakfast and lunch, and I'll see you tomorrow. When I first mixed it, I smeared some vanilla super fuel on this mirror and you can see that now that it's dried its granularity is very fine. There are actually a couple of little black specks. So I'm enjoying my second lunch of super fuel vanilla. It remains sweeter than I prefer. Uh, it has almost no aroma, contrasting to Huel, whose vanilla aroma hit you as you and stuck to your fingers afterward. I also wanted to mention that although this was mixed with cooking oil, I don't taste it. I don't taste the oil at all. And that's ironic because when I judged soil at 1.8, I was complaining that there was an aftertaste of some sort of oil in it, and of course soil at 1.8 doesn't have any oil, or all its oil is powderized. So anyway, I'm going to finish this, and then I'm going to remix a new version of Superfuel Vanilla using heavy cream. I've saved a little sample of the uh, oil mix so that I can compare the two of them tomorrow morning. Good morning. It's time to sample Super Fuel Vanilla mixed with cream and compare it to Super Fuel Vanilla mixed with oil. I've checked the viscosity. It's about the same, but something over a minute. The stuff thickens up quite a bit. Let's see how it tastes. There is no particular difference in the taste. It's got the, the cereal undertone and the um, strong sweetness and the slight hint of vanilla as before. And the mouthfeel I don't think is going to be any different, but let's see. flavors the same. Uh, if anything, the uh, oil mix is slightly smoother, but that could just be because this is 48 hours old instead of 24. Since there doesn't seem to be much difference, I think I will continue this test with the chocolate and the cinnamon flavors using just the oil-based. Uh, I think the conclusion here is that mixing with cream doesn't make any substantial difference, at least not that I can detect. Okay, going to mix some super fuel chocolate. Open the resealable pouch. Hello. Fish around for the scoop. There it is. Okay. 227 and the snowstorm continues.
289. Before I put the oil, I'm going to do an initial blend. I think this will help keep it from sticking on my blender. <clears throat> right, 104 grams of oil. A way over shot. 16 grams of oil is about 150 calories. Okay. I'm going to be overfed from this mix. Oh, this isn't working too well. The oil is staying on the top. Mixing. So that was clearly, it was clearly a mistake. Shaky, shaky. Now we have a nice smooth blend. seconds. It's time for a first breakfast taste of super fuel chocolate. You may recall that my reaction to Schmilk chocolate from the same company was rather tepid because the flavor wasn't exciting to me. Well, let's see if, they, uh, if this is any different. Yes, it is. It tastes less like cocoa powder and more like a chocolate that is reinforced by the thick and creamy mouthfeel. This is a uh, this is a nice chocolate. Um, there's a lot of sweetness, although with the chocolate it doesn't feel like too much sweetness to me. This is like a a lot like a thick chocolate milkshake. Slight graininess and flowery, uh, generally flowery aftertaste on the tongue. But generally good. So this is my second lunch of super fuel chocolate. It got really thick um, at, at the lunch yesterday when it had been in the fridge for about 24 hours from the time it was mixed, it was very thick. Uh, thicker, as thick as Huel. Uh, it's the thickest viscosity I've measured. <clears throat> I couldn't measure Huel because it clogged up the hole of the Zahn cup. Um, but this was pretty close to that thickness. And not particularly appealing to me. I've added water uh, at lunchtime yesterday. And uh, so I've added water. The package directions say use uh, six cups or 1,500 milliliters of water. I've added water to this uh, in proportion. It would be almost two liters or eight cups of water to 2,000, and it's back to a tolerable, a tolerable thickness. Of course, that raises the same problem we had with Huel, that uh, you get the right thickness, but you also increase the volume. So as you can see, I've got quite a, a fair amount left here for my 500-calorie uh, lunch in terms of volume. 
Anyway, the flavor uh, remains about the same as a grocery store chocolate milk. And it's tolerable, except for the thickness. And uh, tomorrow, or in a day or so anyway, I will mix up the, uh, the third flavor of Super Fuel, the cinnamon. Okay, going to mix Super Fuel cinnamon. Go to chocolate. I tried adding the oil last. And that certainly didn't work. Smells like cinnamon. Let us excavate for the scoop. Ah, I touch it. I feel it. It is, ah, oh, please. Scoop. Adding the oil last proved to be a mess. So this time, I think the better solution is to add the oil first. So we'll put in our 109 grams, grams please, 109 grams of oil right up front. close. A couple of grams short. I'm going to call it good at that point. Something like what it ought to be. And then we will just distress our mix. super fuel mix, but I wanted to know if it was even more of an annoyance if you're in the habit of mixing a single meal with a shaker bottle, which I don't normally do. So I'm going to give it a try here. Um, super fuel is uh, 70 grand, two scoops and two tablespoons of oil for 500 calories. We'll, and I've got some water and a little bit of ice and my shaker and we'll try that out. So I'm going to uh, fumble and drop things a little bit. I'm going to throw some ice in there. I'm going to drink this right away. Add some water. spoons of oil. And that's easy to over pour. There we go. Julia Child couldn't do it that Of course, now you have an oily tablespoon to dispose of. Tap the bottle. Two scoops. Otherwise, known as 70 grams. Of course, a scoop is an in, inexact in measure, but I did just a minute ago, did a trial, and uh, two scoops did me measure out to about 69 grams on my kitchen scale, so one scoop. Two scoops. Some more water. So I'm having a taste of super fuel cinnamon a little early. That is a lot thinner than the 
2,000 calorie mix came out to be. I've got some, let's see if we can zoom in on this. There are some the magic of the focus ring. You can see there are some un there's some oil drops floating on here and some small lumps. Quite a few little oil flecks. I wonder if I should have shaken it a little more. I think I'll give that. Shake it a little longer. Got some, you may not be able to see that, but some powder is stuck inside the lid. Going to get it. I'm going to brutalize the shaker a little longer. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's 15 seconds of shaking. Still a good deal thinner than the uh, 2000 calorie mix, but it's a little better consolidated. Now I'm not seeing the oil droplets or the lumps floating on top, so let's have a taste. Interesting. That's... Uh, I've been looking forward to this, comparing it in my mind to vin uh, cinnamon schmilk, which I liked a lot. don't like this as much. The cinnamon, at least it freshly mixed like this, we'll check it again tomorrow morning uh, for the 12-hour refrigeration version. But here I'm getting a uh, very little cinnamon odor, but in the mouth I'm getting a almost a chemical level of cinnamon flavor. It's not too sweet, which is a nice thing. I think I'm tasting the oil. Anyway, check it breakfast after it is chilled. <clears throat> the texture of the single meal that I shook up yesterday was not pleasant. This 12-hour uh, blended version is thick, same thickness about as the uh, vanilla, and hopefully it will taste better. Yes, that is the sweet, cinnamony flavor that I got out of Schmilk, and the same creamy creamy mouthfeel with just the slightest trace of uh, fine grit at the end. This is pleasant. We'll talk about the lessons of that when we wrap it up tomorrow. I'm having my second lunch of Super Fuel Cinnamon. I like Super Fuel Cinnamon just as I liked Schmilk Cinnamon. The vanilla flavor was too sweet for my taste, and the chocolate tasted to me exactly like a supermarket chocolate drink. Whether that's a good thing or not is up to you. When blended and chilled overnight, the super fuel flavors all come out thicker than any product I've tried, except Huel, and smooth with just a bit of grainy texture after you swallow. Blending is important, though. I was really disappointed by the mouthfeel when I shook up a single meal manually. It was simultaneously watery and oily, which tells me the oil was not properly dispersed and emulsified. So if you plan to use Superfuel for single meals, I would recommend that you use one of the little blenders, like the Nutribullet. It'll make a big difference. Superfuel makes you add oil, and as you've seen, that adds a small amount of extra bother to the mixing process. The upside is that if you have a small stature, or if you're dieting, you can mix a day's pitcher with 
1,200 or 1,500 or 1,800 calories and still be sure of getting the right amount of protein and micronutrients. Superfuel is also pretty much free of all of the nutritional bugaboos. It has no soy, no gluten, no maltodextrin, no sucralose, and it's vegan. It costs somewhat more than Soylent 1.8 or Huel, but other than that, it seems like a good choice for a meal replacement.